Hey guys, in this video, we will be looking at SQL's group by statements. Now the SQL group by statement is an excellent way to literally group the data to see more distinct data. And we will look at how it is written, the different variations and considerations that one must make in using this statement. And in the rest of this section, we will actually be looking at aggregate functions that rely on this statement. Now, I did start off by saying that the SQL group by statement can help us to identify distinct data. And I just want to inject a bit of disambiguation there with the select distinct statement. So select distinct actually says that whatever data I'm about to select, I will look for only unique rows. That's what the select distinct does. So if I did a select distinct on enrollments, then what it would do is if I had a row, let's say row 12 with the same data across the columns that I'm selecting, then it would only bring back one row. So let's take for instance, and here's a practical example, at least in this enrollments table, in real world, there should be no two rows that have the same ID, teacher ID, student ID, and course ID, at least taking ID out of the picture, no teacher, student, and course should be repeating in your table. So th there's that. But then in this situation, I do have a lecturer or a teacher teaching the course, and I have two instances of that appearing here. So I have one and four, one and four. So I quickly wrote up two statements, one to just select just the teacher ID and the course ID from enrollments. And if you want to get fancy, of course, you can just inner join everything so you get back more details. But just for the expediency, I'm just going to use this quick example. So select these two columns from the enrollments table. And here's all of enrollments. So when I run this query, it should bring back 17 rows only with the teacher ID and the course ID. Now, when we look at them together, we see that we have a few repetitions here. We have two and two here, two and two here. We have one and four, one and four, et cetera, et cetera. So the select distinct is actually going to say, okay, since I'm seeing these two, the two and two twice, then I only need to bring it back one time. And that's the purpose of select distinct. So I'm just going to run that line and then you can compare the data output. So here we see that we're now eliminating and we're down from, what was it, 17. So we're down from 17 rows to just nine. So the select distinct actually eliminated all of those repeating rows. So if you're in a situation where you have repeating rows of data, but you really only need one row represented in your result set, then the distinct keyword right before the columns and right after the word select, that is your keyword to eliminate those repetitions. That is, however, not why we're here. Why we're here is to group. Now, grouping actually does something a bit differently than the select distinct. Grouping actually will bring back only one record that matches all of the requirements. And it brings back this one record by actually doing like a background mathematics kind of thing to actually keep track of the number of rows that were there, allowing us to then layer certain mathematical functions on top. So if you need math, like for instance, count or the average or the maximum or the minimum, those kind of things, then you need to use a group by to actually bring back that one clump of the same data as opposed to the distinct. The distinct will just omit group by actually clumps. So we'll just do some examples of this. And as we go through this section with the different aggregate functions, then you'll see exactly what I mean by the group by actually helps with the mathematical function. Now we'll just modify this square that's already here, selecting everything from our enrollments and I'll add a group by and the thing with a group by is that it is the last statement. So in other words, if you have an inner join, it comes before the group by. If you have a where, it comes before the group by. So we're going to use a where in this situation. So I'm going to say where. And let us 
run some queries against teacher ID too. So we want to do some things where teacher ID is equal to two, and I'll just execute and sift out. So this is all the data relating to teacher ID two. Now, the first thing to note with the group by is that, well, the second thing to note with the group by is that every column that is being referenced needs to be included in the group by. And this is a blessed curse because the more columns that you put in and the more variations of data is the less grouping that can actually occur. So let's take, for instance, ID. ID is different in every row in this result set. So if I included ID in my group by, I literally would see no difference. All right, so the same way you would write the select and, and specify the columns is the same way you would group by column, comma, column, et cetera, et cetera. And if I execute this query, then you'll see that there is literally no variation in the data set that comes back. That's because, because each row is unique, then there is nothing to group because it can't group distinctly different data or rows. So when you're running a group by, you have to start with a process of elimination. What data is not absolutely necessary to my grouping? So let's take, for instance, ID. I really don't need to group by ID. All right. And so my group by starts with teacher ID. And I'll just pull this up. Now that I've taken ID out of the picture, it depends on what kind of data we want to get back once again. So let's say our scenario is that we want to see how many or all of the courses being taught by this teacher, which means that I just want to see the teacher ID and the course, the teacher ID and the course, the teacher ID and the course. And you can see that these start repeating because he's already here for course two, he's already here for course one, etc. So obviously the variation of the values with student ID across the courses would skew that result. So I can just eliminate student ID and I'll just comment it out quickly because I'm going to use it at a later date. And then I execute and there you go. So the group by is now eliminating all of the additional rows and just bringing back the grouped teacher ID with course one, course two, course three. And remember that we use group by because we want to use some math and we'll get into the math and the aggregate functions a bit later. But for now, just appreciate how the group by works. So we see here, obviously, if the grades were different, then there would be variations there also. So it would be distinctly different data again. So right now, we don't need grade, actually. I didn't remember to remove that. And we can execute. And there we go. So the group by is just clumping these two together. What if we wanted to see all of the students that this teacher is teaching regardless of the course. So then student ID would become our source of contention in addition to course ID. So we can just comment on course ID and then we run it. And so we see teacher two coming back with only one record of the student. And of course we can go ahead and join it on our table if we wish. All right, so I wrote up my inner join statements and I'm just showing you this error here. And this is why I would have alluded to the use of aliases before, because if two tables have the same column name, then there's going to be some amount of ambiguity as to which one is which. So that's why we put on our aliases and we use those to distinctly identify which table it is that we're referring to. Now, having added both tables inner joins to this query, we need to add the columns. Now, note I'm getting this, this arrow saying that certain things are invalid because they are not a part of the group by clause. So remember that any column that I put in, and I'll just paste. So what I did was include the student first name and the student last name and call it student name. And I included the teacher's first name and the and last name, call it teacher's name. And both of these or any column that I'm referencing in my select 
has to be referenced in my group by. So I will have to also add s dot first name, s dot last name, and repeat the same for the teacher columns. And after I've completed adding my additional columns to my group by, so it really doesn't matter the fact that I'm concatenating them and bringing back the full name, it just matters that I am making reference to them in my select. And if I'm selecting them, then they must be a part of the group by. So when, when I write up this entire query and this entire condition, then I must ensure that my group by is a part, contains all the columns that are a part of my query. And so below you see that the teacher ID and the student ID are coming back and the student name is coming back as well as the teacher name. And then really and truly, I don't need the teacher ID and the student ID. So process of elimination, cleaning up my report. And here my output is just the student name and the teacher name. So in the back end, I'm grouping by, and I could probably even take them out of the group by clause. And there you go. So it's just a process of elimination really and truly. So sometimes you're building from the ground up, you have a requirement for a report, you don't know where the data is coming from, you feel it out, you group by, and then when you see a sensible result, then you can refine it so that you get the desired output, all right? So as we go along, we'll see how group by helps us with our aggregate functions.